There we go. All right. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Andrew Sullivan. I am a technical marketing engineer with NetApp, one of the sponsors out there. Ultimately, what being a technical marketing engineer means is that I get no respect from either marketing or engineering. Both of those are in my title, so therefore we get summarily ignored. So that being said, what I'm really here to talk to you to about today is infrastructure extensibility, both at home and how this applies to DevOps. And why is it not advancing? Ah, oh, there we go. I didn't see it up here. I'm sorry. So when we look at APIs, when we look at these things, when we look at what's happening inside of our infrastructure, right? when we look at that down low hardware, we want to be able to take advantage of that. We want to be able to use it how we need it as we go through the DevOps practice. And this isn't something that just applies in the enterprise. We're familiar with this from, well, our homes, right? where we're starting to see this influx of devices. I know on my phone, I have at least a half a dozen apps for controlling all of the different aspects of my house, from locks, to cameras, to doors, to all of these other things inside of there, right? And this has evolved over time. When we think about the light bulb, it wasn't invented with automation, with orchestration, with API integration in mind. And really the same is true of all of these other devices. As we look at our houses, when we look at things like, well, lawnmowers, when we look at things like the broom, which has now evolved into the robot, right, Roomba, all of these other things have evolved over time. And because of that uneven progression, what we ended up with is, well, uneven maturity, right? Where we see things like, I get text messages similar to this from my wife all the time. I travel regularly. I get messages saying, hey, I can't play a movie because the door is locked, right? And crazy things like that. So how do we solve these problems? It's starting to come about where we see these services that unify all of these together, where we now have these broad orchestrator systems. Think things like fear at home. Think things like if this, then that. Where now I can say, hey, this is off course. We need to go and fix it. We need to tell the lawnmower to get back on the lawn and get out of the driveway. So ultimately, I inherited this deck. I really don't know why Josh Atwell put Nikola Tesla in here. So I'm going to use this slide as a moment to catch my breath and get back on time. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's kind of that. So how does this really apply to us? We're at DevOps days. What does that really mean? When we think about DevOps, when we think about infrastructure and extensibility, we're not just writing code and tossing it over the wall. We want to be able to, we want to ensure that our deployments are actually going to work. And the best way to do that is by making sure that the dev and test environments as closely mimic as production, production as possible. And we do that by taking advantage of those hardware-based APIs and SDKs. But again, these things haven't developed even equally over time. Right? When we think about the deployment process, oftentimes our developers are they're writing code, adding features, fixing bugs. They package it up into a nice little hand grenade shape and they lob it over the wall to the ops guys who jump on the grenade and do their best to test it before it goes live. But the reality is that's hard, or at least it has been hard historically. Storage, network, compute resources all have uneven capabilities when it comes to automation, when it comes to orchestration. But that's changing. Vendors, like the one that I work for, are working to enable, enhance those APIs and SDKs. And not just enabling our own APIs and SDKs, but also enabling them through the tools that, well, hopefully we're already using, that we're already familiar with going forward. So when we look at things like the massive number of DevOps tools, right, remember DevOps is not any one tool, but it's whatever collection of tools we choose to use, we have all of this choice, we have all of these options available to us. So leveraging those tools that we're already familiar with, already comfortable with, and taking advantage of that to ultimately, well, do some really cool stuff with our infrastructure. The goal being reduce risk. We want to reduce risk throughout the development, throughout the software development lifecycle, so that we can take advantage of, well, all of the great benefits of DevOps. One of the things that we tend to recommend is, well, a policy-based approach. So what does this really mean? Policy-based means that instead of having hard, fast rules, i.e., I have this storage device, it needs to do X, not Y, we take a policy-based approach. If it has these capabilities, let it be able to do this. This means that over time, for me as an operations guy, as an infrastructure guy, my underlying components can, come, can change. Right? I can swap them in and out as needed, but from the developer perspective, from the application perspective, well, they're still capable of doing the same things. It's transparent. And ultimately, the goal is to, well, lower that wall of deployment. 
So that way, our DevOps, our communication collaboration can come together and we end up with a better business outcome in the end. But just be careful when you connect hardware to the internet because as always, Skynet is watching. Thank you very much for your time today. I hope everybody has a great rest of the day.